Live from BNC Studios, it's Ladle Fight. And as my world gets older, this place some more boulders on my shoulder now. And judging by the sound, here comes the avatar knocking me down. But throughout all the malicious faces and cases, the days will they roll on. To kick it like a song, I let the verse go and sing it when the chorus comes on. Sometimes it never does. It's right, your ending, you must. Yes, I think I have the lust to make a great thing out of the dust. Keep learning about the things I love, oh, about the things that I used to think of. So this one's for the stragglers, lollygags, but stuff for wasting the time. You don't have to be hunched over a desk all day to expand your mind. And I said, I. Welcome to another installment of The Boulevard's Best, a show where we interview local bands and record them performing live. I'm your host, Adam Maisto, and today with me is Ladle Fight, a band from Tacoma Park, Maryland, who have been interviewed in German Rolling Stone and NPR, and on the radio version of The Boulevard's Best. So how did you all meet? Uh, well, <laughs> uh. well, um, well, me and Ben have been friends since preschool. We met when we were two, um, and then... We met Ian in kindergarten when he moved from Boston, right? I mean, I had been living in DC. Oh. I went to I just didn't, went to a different preschool like a uh, for like a year. Yeah, you moved from Boston, and then Michael. I thought, like I knew you mm. from the bus stop in third yeah. grade. Yeah. <laughs> so when did you get together and you know start playing music? When did you meet and start doing that? Around uh, third grade, third like grade. Ben and Zeke had had a musical history together. And then there were like a few random people who were in the band for like a second, but um, it ended up being Zeke, Michael, and Ben, and then I was the manager of the band. Michael's and definitely. this is, this is about third. Oh yeah, Michael's manager first. This is in third grade, and then yeah. later Michael's playing, Michael's playing, and then I ended up being manager, which really meant that I flicked the lights on and off to make it seem like there was a strobe light, and. Uh, and then eventually I sat down at a drum set and Zeke showed me a couple beats and that's how I started my drumming career with and, Little Fight. And can you describe what that third grade sound was like? Like if you had to give if you had to describe it in just a couple words, what words would you describe? Terrible. Bad it, punk. Bad yeah, punk. bad punk. Bad punk. I wouldn't even I wouldn't even sounds like I wouldn't even give it a band. genre. Punk. You wouldn't give it a genre? I would. Just, it was pretty it was too, hardcore. It was too squealy for Don't yeah, underestimate it. Was, it. It was like 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 black flag kinda. <laughs> kinda like a, 
Yeah. All right. And I, uh, I can imagine that living in this area around in D.C., like your entire lives for some of you, has uh, influenced your music in a lot of different ways. Um, can you describe how it has and if it hasn't, what factors do influence your music? Um, I guess D.C. provides exposure to live concerts. I mean, we have the privilege of a couple good music clubs that we can go to. And one of our first concerts that like meant something was the Folk Festival. Mm -hmm. And so that has really helped us. Uh, Are you talking about I that? would I would also say the culture we were brought up in in Tacoma Park probably influences what we write songs about. Do you think you can elaborate on that? Um, well, Damn Fool, one of our songs is about global warming. Mm -hmm. uh, Hippy dippy. I mean, like, Hippy Tacoma dippy. Park Street Festival, Tacoma Park Folk Festival are, like, like gigs that we play. Cause, like, our Folk Festival we've been playing for a couple of years now, and Street Fest we just played out for the first time. And it's just these big, like, community events that are all about music and arts and food and everything. It's just... Being being so closely knit with a lot of other musicians in the same town and being able to like play off each other and just got a lot of influence from both DC and where we live in Tacoma, it's just it's a nice little pool of so, arts. So there. that that emphasis on like community and also on like creativity, you know, music and the arts, that's that's helped out a lot. Yeah, Definitely. I mean, also songwriting, just like having it's like such interesting experiences in Tacoma. Like songs like Grace, which are made up of like a bunch of different experiences and stuff mm -hmm. around the town. And uh, what would you say? What what musician or band has inspired your own music the most? Oh, impossible. <laughs> that's that's a hard question to answer. Uh, I mean, we all have our station? own. We, yeah. all, we all have our own like individual uh, different bands that we like and that mm -hmm. influence our own music, but. Yeah. Um, which As a band, we have. I, I mean, there's very, overlaps, but. Yeah, there's. Yeah. But I think the variety of uh, musical tastes and to some extent backgrounds of what we're doing for and during the band has. Definitely benefited uh, us. Yeah. Only been um, an advantage. All besides, like, arguing, like, through, like, what we want to do with songs. But, I mean, <coughs> even though. <coughs> that sometimes can be time consuming, it's worth it for like the musical diversity. So I guess name one is a little bit too like hard to do, but like could you say like you said that there are overlaps. Would mm -hmm. you say that can you name some of the uh, more notable overlaps that you I might have? I think like Chili Peppers. Red Hot Chili Peppers, tallest man on earth. Um Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of bands where one of us, one of us, will kind of like discover this band and like show it to the other guys, and then suddenly we'll all be listening to this one band for like a month. Like that happened with, uh, with like local natives and yeah. stuff and hockey. Like we got really into this band hockey, and then suddenly we're listening to them a lot. And like probably somewhere, one of their songs like influenced one of ours just mm -hmm. through us like spreading music throughout each other. But I mean, yeah, it just it's cool. I see. I see. <laughs> local natives are a big. Uh, mm -hmm. Overlap. Okay. Yeah. So if you were stranded on a desert island and you could only bring five albums with you, which would you bring? Why would you bring them? Well, uh, um, all right. So we would all get an album because and we like to appreciate ourselves. What, yeah. what one should we do for the band? Uh, I'd say Blood Sugar Sex Magic. For, like but the whole band is a good one. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. It's a good, all right. It's a good choice. And then Ben will be yours. Um, I guess I'll go with Mind Chaos by Hockey. Okay. Zeke? Uh, causers of this tour, we moi. All right. Uh, Shallow Grave, Tallest Man on Earth. Okay. Um, the album Not Too Dread by Bob Marley and the wh and the and the Whalers. I was like, just I grew up with that album and it got me into music. Cool. And. Uh, What's the uh, songwriting process like for you guys? Would you mind describing, you know, what that is? Is there any specific thing you do when you write songs? Who writes the songs, you know? It changes a lot. Usually, like, <laughs> one yeah. person will come in with something. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, like one person will come in with an instrumental part, and then lyrics will be built around that in some always-changing form. Right. I mean, 
It depends on the sum, on, on the solve, not the sum. Uh, some of them, like, uh, someone comes in with music and, like, lyrics written to, like, one verse, and then the rest of them, like, helps them write the rest, or, um, and sometimes, there's probably a couple songs which are, like, really, really collaborative, and other ones which are, like, more specific people are, like, half and half. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely very much all band members involved. And even if, like, someone wasn't involved in the original process, they'll end up adding their own tweak to it by um, adjusting that part. Just the way they play it. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what was the name of the last song that we heard from you guys? Uh, Poke Through. Poke Through. And uh, what's the name of the next song that you're going to be playing? Do you mind? Uh, Grace. Grace? All right. You're watching The Boulevard's Best, and this is Ladle Fight with their original Grace. Your clothes from walk around at night and pick your scarf up off the ground. Wrap it around your cold neck. One night you go to my doorstep, crying about your friend. She lets you down. She's in my face now. To a higher place, display your love on the shelf and find your own grace. Sweet the sound moves from ear to ear, but it is seeping out, my dear. Do anything where you'll find yourself Find a happy boy who is not me And welcome back to the Boulevard's Best. We're sitting down with Ladle Fight. So, uh, what was the name of that next, uh, that last song? Grace. It was Grace? And uh, who wrote Grace? Uh, me, and then Ian wrote the lyrics. Yeah, I ended up writing the lyrics to Grace, and Zeke wrote, like, or, yeah, Zeke and Ben wrote the music, and, like, Michael helped out with that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, Zeke wrote the guitar part for Grace, and then it just kind of built up with everybody, including, and then I wrote the lyrics. All right. So uh, on your website, it says that you've been written up by Rolling Stone magazine in Germany. Uh, what was that like? What was that? Can you describe that whole experience? Um, well, basically, it came upon us in the fact that you just shot us an email out of the blue. Who did? Uh, the... Yerkin. 
the guy who wanted to write an article about us. It was Jurgen. It was, no, it was, like was his name Jurgen? Yeah. I don't know, okay. some, Probably. One of the uh, main people for the German Rolling Stone just uh, uh, emailed us. Uh, we assume they found us through NPR. We thought it was fake at first. So did so we? Yeah. So you were on. You, you were did. On, <laughs> you were on NPR before you were written up by Rolling Stone. Yes. Yeah. So what was that also? Um, okay, I would yeah. have to give that credit to Marika. Yeah, Marika yeah. Partridge. Um, she had this uh, this girl come down, Sarah Venturi, who was an intern at NPR at the time, and she really liked us. And she was starting this segment called uh, Tinier Desk Concerts. Which is basically a teen version of the NPR Tiny Desk Concert Series. It's not boiling yet. Yeah, and uh, so she called us in to do an interview and play a couple songs there. And it's cool. Like there, like another band played Tiny Desk on the Polka Dots, who have played at Folk Festival, and it's like another teen band. But uh, it was a really awesome experience. It was our first big, I guess, media experience, like working yeah. with radio and like having a video shot and whatnot. Yeah. And then. Uh, so that went up on the NPR page and spread around a little bit. And then we assumed the German guy just picked us up from NPR. So then what was the actual interview like? He With, emailed us. It was an email interview. Yeah, for German Rolling Stone? Yeah. Yeah, he emailed us a set of questions for each band member to answer. And at the time, we were all on like winter break. Mm -hmm. So we all just... Yeah, I was in answers. Massachusetts when I answered those questions. Word. And they ended up, yeah. uh, in the article, they ended up messing up like a quote, like in translation. Mm -hmm. Like the quote was, they asked us, how long do you think we'll be together? And I always think that's a weird question. <laughs> it's like, yeah. like, how long are you going to last? But uh, I said, I said like, it, it, you can't really tell. We could break up tomorrow. We could be together till we all die. Yeah. And, um, yeah, they said, like, and the guy said, either, and the guy said, like, either. Ian, like Ian says, they will either break up tomorrow or be together till they all die. <laughs> like it was an that? ultimatum. Yeah. Well, <laughs> was, yeah. I mean, yeah, lost in translation, I guess. But, uh, <laughs> That's cool though. Like I, I don't think any other band, like in this age group or like me local, like high school music scene, can say that they've been written up by Rolling Stone, even if it's German. You know, it's still, <laughs> it's still something. So like, yeah. it's, it's yes. very, uh, very impressive. Yes. So do you have plans for the future? You know, new songs, upcoming shows. Well, we're planning on recording a second album um, in the beginning of the summer, which should be out sometime in 2013. All right, any word about the album? Like, is, is there a concept behind it? Are you? Um, the concept would be better songs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because, I mean, our first album. I thought it was good. Yeah, I mean. I it's, mean, it's it's the it's the issue of like it's sort of yeah. outdated it's, though. It's it doesn't yeah. really represent our music anymore though. Yeah, really. it's immature. And if you listen to any like band that has evolving music, which is any band, you know their music doesn't represent their current form at mm -hmm. any given time, like their past recorded music. Right. Um, so yeah, but I, I get why you would want to do that. And what's the recording process like for you guys? Um, well, for the last album. We went to uh, Q Studios in Virginia with Ben's uncle, James Katz, who ended up like producing our album. And uh, he was great. And then me and Ben ended up doing a trip up to New York to his apartment studio to uh, record the final vocal tracks. Nice. And I mean, it, got, it just got put together really well and we're really happy with the sound. It was like it was it was a really amazing new experience to have and it was great to have kind of like James as a mentor through the whole process. Mm -hmm. yeah. But for the second one we're gonna come into it with like a little bit more knowledge, so I yeah. think it'll be better. Are you yeah. still recording at Q Studios? We haven't uh, gotten yeah. that far, yeah. but <laughs> probably. Probably. Um, we had a good experience there it's the first time. Yeah. Mm. The engineer know. wasn't so good. I mean the engineer wasn't fantastic, but he just didn't like us. Yeah. He just didn't like us, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> I mean, we'll probably go back there. Meet, you know, it's just the, uh, the, you'll meet people like that, yeah. whatever. I mean, he he warmed up to us. He let Michael use his guitar. Yeah. 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 And, uh, you know, I also asked upcoming shows. Any plans for that? Um, well, we actually have a couple. We're playing um, this concert for uh, City at Peace, or City in Transition now for Jordana Rubenstein, and... Uh, and we have a show at uh, my school, GDS. It's like GDS Music Night, but uh, it's only GDS students, so if anyone out there is planning on going, you can. But it'll be fun. So Too exclusive. <laughs> so you got the uh, City in Transition, you got the GDS Music Night. Are you doing the uh, New Orleans Benefit on March 10th? Because I know a lot of bands from around here are doing that. No, but we might play the Silver Quill concert on Silver March Quill 8th. On March 9th. 
9th. Yeah, March 9th. Okay. At the Electric Maid? Yeah, we haven't responded to them, but we might. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know. So we've got a, bu you know, a bunch of possible shows coming up. Yeah. yeah. Cool, cool. So, uh, what's the name of this next song going to be? Uh, Merrily. Merrily? All right. Here's Merrily, and you're watching The Boulevard's Best, and this is Ladle Fight. That was the end of the show. That was the end of the show? Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. So let me let me just ask that last question again, I guess. <clears throat> so do you guys mind playing another song for us? Not at all. All right. And what's the name of the song going to be? Merrily. All right. So after Merrily, that's going to be our show. So you've been watching The Boulevard's Best on BNC Radio, and I've been your host, Adam Maestow. You can check out other BNC productions by going to bnc.mbhs.edu. You can also check out Ladle Fight on iTunes or going to their website, which is ladlefightmusic.com. And now, it's not Ladle Fight Music. It's Ladle Fight. Ladle Fight. Ladle Fight.com. All right. I stand corrected. <laughs> now, here's uh, their original Merrily. Thanks for watching.